All right. We're going to continue with our post-race press conference here this evening for the Food City Dirt Race at Bristol Motor Speedway. We've now been joined by our race winner, Christopher Bell. This is Christopher's fifth victory and his first victory of 2023. So, Christopher, congratulations. Um, it feels kind of natural that you would finally win the Bristol Dirt Race, but talk to us a little bit about your run tonight and, and just how it feels to finally have this one um, checked. Yeah, that was uh, that was tough. You know, those last, I don't know, last 70 laps or whatever um, it was, probably less than that when we got on the top was very uh, tricky because the cushion was um, very unforgiving to run. And if you made mistakes, you paid a really big price. So uh, yeah, the, the laps just felt like they were taking forever to tick by just because it was so um, hard to, you know, get the car through the corner and not make a mistake. Uh, yeah. So it was very tough for my seat, but uh, hopefully it was a good race. I know whenever I was back in the field at the beginning of the race, uh, people were two and three wide the majority of the time. So um, it was pretty good for my seat. All right, and now we're gonna open for questions for Christopher. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. We'll start up front with Lee Spencer. They're racing with like Briscoe and the two of you growing up together and, and whether it's Reddick, I mean, the top six guys all come from a dirt discipline. What was it about the track tonight that just kind of favored you all? Yeah, I mean, the track was most definitely a, uh, you know, a, a very tough surface to get a hold of. And it sh should have rewarded guys that kind of knew what to expect and, and how to, you know, get the car around the racetrack, which I think it did. Uh, so, you know, it was a it was a it was a tricky surface. It was very tough to, you know, produce lap time. And uh, I think it, that's what made it fun, too. All right, additional questions for Christopher? Okay, we'll go to Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, is your opinion on Bristol change at all as a dirt track? I mean, I, I don't know. I guess that's more for the general public to decide. But for my seat, it seemed like it was a pretty good race. Um, but this is also one of the best short tracks that we have on the schedule. So, you know, I I, I don't know. I'm, maybe we have three Bristol races, and that's probably not likely. But uh um, yeah, I'm good either way on it. And then you, you win three races last year. You make the championship four. You consistently outrun your more heralded teammates, but yet you probably don't get the spotlight and the shine that they do. Um, does that ever kind of bother you at all or anything, or do you care? Uh, no. I mean, I'd, I'd probably rather it be that way. You know, it. it um, I, I really enjoy just driving race cars, and, and I... I yeah, I love driving race cars, and, um, you know, that's that's fine by me. Maybe if I win a couple more races, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a tough question. Tough question <laughs> I don't really have an answer for, but uh, it doesn't bother me. All right, Bob. Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. Is there a reason that it seemed like all the dirt guys really excelled today compared to the other dirt races here? Yeah, I mean – Definitely, uh, the track favored experience on dirt tracks tonight, but at the same, you know, on the same hand last year, two dirt guys were definitely going to run one, two, if they didn't get, you know, taken out on the last lap. So, uh, with that being said, last year was very similar that two dirt guys were going to run first and second. Um, but tonight for sure, the track was, uh, very tough and, um, certainly favored the guys that had experience on that style of track. All right. Any questions upstairs? Evening, Jasmine. Oh. Any question upstairs? Press box? Press box? All right. We'll come back downstairs. Go ahead. Sorry. Evening, Jasmine Sharp with the podium finish. Uh, just two questions. So, what are some of the things that your crew chief, you know, Adam has brought out of you that you think has kind of sharpened you, made you more keen on everything overall since he's taken over for the number 20 back in 2021. Yeah, I mean, Adam just has been able to instill confidence in me uh, by by giving me fast race cars and, and cars that I know are going to handle um, good enough for me. You know, so he he's a very probably the best leader that I've ever driven for. And he knows, you know, how to manage the highs and lows of a season. And uh, he definitely can bring out the best in me. That's great. And then second question, um, 
So Toyota as a manufacturer seems to be picking up some momentum in re recent weeks between you and Tyler winning. Do you think that this is potentially a spark or something that will kind of pick up as the season goes? Uh, I would, I hope so. You know, the, the Chevrolets have been super fast to start out the year and, uh, you know, there, there was no doubt that we were behind them, but we're in a really good stretch of races for our cars. Uh, if you look at, you know, Richmond, Bristol dirt, and then even Martinsville, I would expect us to, to be really strong at, uh, and then when we get back to the mile and a half, so I'm not really sure where we're at. So, uh, with that being said, it, we know that there is room to improve, um, and, and hopefully that comes sooner rather than later. Go to Dustin, Bob, Matt, and then up to Lee. Go ahead. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. You mentioned just this, this three-race stretch. What does it mean to get the fourth, to get the win here, to take advantage of these opportunities? I think it's, what, 97 points in two races that you've scored so far. Going into Martinsville, obviously, last time you were there, you were the winner. Yeah, it's. we knew that this was going to be a good stretch of races and obviously wanted to capitalize on it. Um, but last year through the playoffs, it was just a, a really big eye-opener of playoff points, how important they are. And, uh, well, you know, frankly, we didn't have very many of them last year. So the only thing that pays payoff points is uh, race wins and stage wins. So thankfully, we've got five in the bank now, and uh, we need to get some more. And how did this track challenge you in, in, a, in a different way tonight? Yeah, so it was just very technical. Uh, it obviously got very slippery, and uh, the cushion up top had speed in it if you could run next to it. But the problem was is that if you got over it, you paid a really big penalty and lost a lot of time. Uh, and you could get over it with the right rear, and you can get over it with the right front. So it was just a very fine balance of getting the car bent and crooked enough to you know ride against it uh, without getting your right rear over it, without getting your right front over it. And, and you know, the, these things are just... They're, they're pretty tough to drive on a dirt track, especially whenever you're trying to drift them around the corner. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of wrestling a pig out there for however many corners you got. So is this as good of a race as could possibly be? I definitely think that this was uh, the cream of the crop for track conditions. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that you're going to get any better than that. Bob Chris Fox Sports, uh, did you, I mean, how confident were you you were going to win even if the caution didn't come out? Did you feel like you had enough did, um, edge on Tyler that he wouldn't be able to make a move on you? Uh, I mean, I, I was going to, I was fully committed to block the move. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm sure that he would have given me a little friendly bumper. And, you know, I don't know, I might have spun out, I might not have spun out. But uh, I was prepared to block the move. Maybe that would have caught him off guard. Um, but you know, I, I was, uh, I didn't know the yellow flag came out until I had already shown my hand going into turn three. Um, so it was probably going to be an exciting finish. That's for sure. Matt Weaver, Motorsports Tribune. Um, you had a pretty good launch there on that last restart and you'd kind of driven away from Tyler a little bit, but you kind of backed up to him there closer to the finish. Was that you just trying to take care of it or what was the biggest concern you had in the back of your mind getting closer to the finish? Yeah. I mean, I think it it, it kind of goes both ways where I'm leading the race and I have everything to lose and nothing to gain. And he has, you know, everything to gain and nothing to lose. So for me, um, I was just trying to make sure that I hit my marks, drive smooth and not make a mistake, uh, that, that took myself out of it. And I'm sure that he was given it 110%. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that was the, the majority of it. Uh, yeah. What did Reddick say to you after the race when he came up to the car? And, you know, just the fact that the kind of respect that you guys have. I mean, he didn't get pissed at Briscoe last year where, you know, if it had just been on a traditional short track and somebody had wiped you out, you know, it would have been a whole different can of worms. But, you know, is there that level of respect amongst you guys? And, and you know, what did he say? Uh, he just said it was going to be interesting if the yellow flag didn't come out. But, uh yeah, I mean, obviously, he said congratulations and um, great day for you know both of us to run one too. And you're the last guy to win at Martinsville, so how much confidence does that give you going there next week? And um, where did you put your grandfather clock? Yeah, so my grandfather clock is in my dining room, um, so that's where that sits. 
but yeah, I mean, I feel good about going back to Martinsville. It's going to be certainly different with the low downforce package, uh, but it's different for everybody. And, and, you know, I feel like we were the best car there in this, in the fall. So, um, you know, we, hopefully we can do our homework and, and make sure to, uh, study the differences between, you know, Richmond and Phoenix with the low downforce package and, and what we expect at Martinsville. You had already w moved your winning Chili Bowl car out of the house, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All right, we're going to take one final question with Kelly up front. <laughs> Kelly, crownedracer.com. Christopher, I wanted to go back to, um, you said there you had showed your hand going into three because Tyler had questioned if you th knew the caution was out or if that was going to be your defensive move. So what did what were you going to prepare for uh, had the caution not come out of knowing he was probably going to try something? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was I had kind of been running the slider line through three and four uh, earlier in the third stage. Uh, and I f felt like that I would while I would overall hurt my lap time by doing that, um, it was going to be a defensive move to block the line where he couldn't, uh, you know, get in there and get beside me and, and put me in the fence or whatever he was going to do. Uh, and then obviously I was prepared to lose momentum off the corner, but my, my goal was to, you know, have him not be able to get me uh, before we got to the line. Yeah. Yes. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. You, you just got to, or I was trying to take care of myself and not, not be put in a vulnerable position. All right. Sounds like we do have one question in the press box. Go ahead. Mark Garrow, PRN. Christopher, how much pressure does this take off when you race this early in the season, and what does that mean to the rest of your regular season? Yeah, it definitely takes pressure off, but, uh, you know, it, it doesn't change the end goal. And, and, you know, like I mentioned earlier about the playoff points, that's what we need to start building, building upon in the regular season and something that we did a bad job on last year. So, uh with the way that this format is, the only way you score playoff points is by winning stages and winning races. Um, and so, you know, ultimately we need to get to where we can win some more races and win some stages. All right. All right, we'll take one final question for the third time from Dustin Long. No, okay. I apologize. Th thank you, Christopher. Hey, um, I forgot to mention this. With, with getting the win tonight, it's your fifth win in your, in your first 116 cup starts. So among active drivers, Brad Kozlowski won eight times in his first 116. Then it's you, and at four is, is Tyler Reddick, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick. And I think you can make the argument that those are future Hall of Famers. It's and pretty to, cool. To do what you have done, and obviously you, you, you in one sense you were groomed for this, but just because somebody is doesn't mean that they're going to succeed. What does it mean to have more wins than any other active driver in their first 116 starts other than Kozlowski, a former champion? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's incredible and uh, something that I'm, you know, forever grateful to be in the position I am in to, to drive for a, a team that's capable of giving me race cars capable of winning. Um, but, you know, I, I try to not look at the stats and, uh, and focus on the task at hand, so... You know, that is very rewarding to hear, and, and hopefully I'm not done here. All right. That was a good good question there, Dustin, so we'll let you pass. All right, Christopher, congratulations again on your win this evening. That's pretty cool. That's pretty freaking cool. Thank you.